afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Joshua Taylor coming to you from my work 20 in Boston Bar. This is a second test of using the refractory brick to uh, measure the carbon foam. As you can see, I have this tuna can about half full and I just slightly compressed it. And I've had the uh, that fire brick on there heating for about five minutes. But as you can see, that's our temperature. So I picked up a little bit of heat from the sitting on the brick. The brick's about 100, 100 degrees. So I picked up a little residual heat. So we're that's six, seven hundred degrees. Depending, so this may be saturated already. Bottom is about 1300. So, what we're going to do is place the can on there. So, we're just uh, going to monitor the gauge 77 degrees. It's hotter toward the edges because the heat from the can is rising up. So 75 in the center. So you can see that the can's getting hot. 131 on the bottom. The edges 120. You have to pull back here. Getting a reading about, it's hard to know the average 130, 135 degrees. You can see a little bit of gasification coming off. Maybe what I'll do is. I'm going to bring the camera a little closer. And maybe raise it up a bit. I want to take another reading. About there. And we're going to just tilt this down a bit. All right. It's been on there a few minutes or so. Three minutes. So we have fire brick, it's 192. Bottom of the can is 160. Top's 110. So we're getting some heat transfer to the can. It's you'd want to leave your hand on it too long. Let's measure the center. 161. The sides are 170. And we know that the underneath is at least 1300. 160 degrees. Right over the hot spot there. The holes more to the right. One sixty two, one seventy. Have to pull back here. We know that the ambient temperature here is around 50, so 120 degrees maybe of heat transfer through this about half inch thick. I know if that's steam coming off or whether that's gasification. Some stuff was going on underneath there.
Well, definitely more carbon foam. The thicker it is, the better the insulation value. I think it's quite amazing. And this is all from bread. You just take bread, put it into a blender, blend it up, filter out the the uh, all the crap that comes out, so your your breadcrumbs are uniform. You want, and you want to use moist bread. I tried dry bread. It actually works better with moist bread. And you actually put this into a crucible and crystallize it with uh, CO2 from the uh, Joe pipe. So we're just going to bring this back. So the fire brick is already 875. I think that's pretty cool. And it cools off just as quick. But I got my fingers in there. It's, it's toasty warm. You wouldn't want to leave your fingers there too long. So it has picked up a little bit of heat. Still absorbing heat. So we know it's blocking out at least a thousand degrees. A thousand degrees on a half inch. Right, so it might reach a saturation point with the fact that you can make this at home. It's pretty amazing because the time will come where you would not be able to buy a fire brick. Under 200. Maybe I'll be hitting the 300 point on the, on the hot spot. And it seems to be maintaining. The gauge is 327. So we can say 1300 on, on the heat underneath, minimal. 300 in there. Well, I can say that it's blocking out about 75 to 80 percent of the heat depending on the thickness. All right, going to end it here. This is Joshua Taylor coming to you from here in Boston Bar. A lot of gasification coming off this yet. I'm surprised. It might be the tin can Stuff coming off the tin can too, off that tuna can. Boston Bar, British Columbia, Canada, on this carbon foam.